Hello fellow problem solvers. So today we're going to be talking about how you can get from zero to the IMO. Let's begin. So the first step that you need to do here is you need to figure out what are the different levels that you need to pass in your own country to be able to represent your country at the International Math Olympiad. And this is really dependent country from country. For me, it was first like in my country it was the school board, the school competition. Then I needed to pass the local level. And after that, the cantonal level, federal level, and then the state team selection test. And after you figure out what all these levels are, what you need to do is you need to learn about proof writing at some point, at least. It might not be at the beginning. I know some countries have A, B, C, D, E type questions that they give you at the beginning levels where they try to funnel people into a smaller group of people that are going to be doing these competition type exams. And after you've learned about these levels, you need to learn about proof writing. And proof writing is really, say, how do you prove that you can put at most eight queens on an eight times eight chessboard such that no two queens attack each other? Like, it seems intuitive. Why eight? Why can't you put nine? And how can you put eight? Can you put eight? Like, you need to know how you write proofs like this. How do you write a proof that if 3 divides a squared plus b squared, where a and b are integers, then 3 divides a and 3 divides b. Like, how do you prove this fact? It doesn't, it's not easy to figure out how you're going to actually be doing that. And it requires you to know that you can't just plug numbers in. Oh, I plugged in 3 and 0, and that means, and 3 divides both 3 and 0, and 3 divides both 9 plus 0. And so you need to know how you write proofs. At some point, you are going to need to learn that. After you learn a bit of proof writing, you know what these levels are. You need to look at the previous tests from all these levels, going back five, ten years, and solve, try to solve those problems, actually. Try to solve those problems for 30 minutes, an hour, an hour and a half, and get a sense of, at the very minimum, get a sense of what these problems are about. What are they asking? What are they like? And it's very likely that at some point you will run into a problem whose solution you don't understand. And what you're meant to be, do after you try these problems out for about 30 minutes or so, again, depending on the level, is you want to look at the solution to the problem and see if you, one, understand it. If you don't understand it, you will need to do something else. But if you understand it, you need to ask yourself, what is the logic? that makes this solution, that makes somebody wants to make the solution? What is the motivation for this solution? And that is something that you usually need to decipher on your own. But the first thing that you need to do, like, is to solve problems on all these levels. Try and solve problems. And after you've done solving problems from the previous years on every single one of these levels, look at problems of a similar difficulty and type from other countries. The website Art of Problem Solving is a phenomenal resource for this. The forums there have contests from around the world, all sorts of tests at many different levels. And if you run into problems who you try, which you try to solve for 30 minutes, and then you look at a solution and you just don't understand, say it's a geometry problem and it says, we invert around the point A with a variable with a radius that we don't care about and you go what is inversion like you haven't maybe seen that before so you try you you know look it up online and you try to learn about inversion or you try to see like is there anything that this solution has that you could apply to something you know previously but the thing i want to stress here is you first try to solve problems and then when you can solve them when you run into something that you've never seen before, then you learn theory. And learning theory is not just about you going through a paper or a handout or a book once and you're done with it. It's really about coming back, back to it. Once you, you read it, you try to solve some problems, you read it again, you try to solve some problems. And sometimes you run into it again and again. For example, when I was trying to learn about projective geometry in my competition days, I read the same handout probably about four or five, maybe even six times. I don't remember how much, but I read it many times with 
months in between. So I read it once and then I didn't really get anything. I got that there was some like Cheva and Menelaus theorem going on and then I figured oh here's this little cool thing that I can learn when I see that and then I did not understand anything. I basically understood the first page. Then I went again, I solved some problems, came back to the paper about six months later and I learned about a lemma that the paper uses in projective geometry. I'm like, oh, this is interesting. I then went out, solved a bunch of problems and applied it at a place or two, came back to it a couple of months again and then I realized, oh, this is what projection is. Uh Uh-huh. And then I solved some problems, came back to a couple of months, saw, oh, this is why you can do it. So I came back to the same paper time and time again. I didn't understand it the first time. I didn't understand it the second time, nor the third time. It was only around the fourth or fifth reading that I actually realized how I can actually use this tool and why it's powerful. But it's important that I solve problems regardless. And I didn't just spend time trying to figure out, oh, what is this? Or say Vieta jumping. It's things like this. These are a bit more advanced concepts, but they hold even like in the introductory concepts. You learn about something, you try to understand it, you see if you do, you try to solve a problem with it, you try the example problems, and then you go back to solving different types of problems perhaps. And then later, you come back to it again. And then you solve some problems, you come back to it again. But the second part is the theory, really. The first part is you need to solve different types of problems. And there's insecurity that ha- that's at play here. When you don't feel secure in your problem-solving abilities, you would like to believe that, oh, if only I knew more, I would be able to solve more. But that's not necessarily the case. Sometimes it's that if you solve more, you, then you will be able to solve more. You just need to look at easier problems and try to learn how to apply the tools that you already know to solve them. But that's the fourth step, you know, solving problems. So like learning the theory, that's the fourth step. And after you've done that, then you need to move on to the fifth and most often neglected part of this is to learn how to take exams. Because that is not easy. There is a pressure that can be mounted upon you once you're taking these exams. And this is really dependent person to person. I know for me, I needed to learn how to take these exams. That say in my second year of high school, I went to the state competition and I was maybe going to pass, maybe I wasn't, but I was so overwhelmed with the pressure that the night before I couldn't fall asleep for three hours. I was sweating. I just couldn't like fall asleep at all. And then I blundered the exam. And it only took me a year later to actually go again to the state competition and actually pass to the International Math Olympiad. But I needed to learn how to deal with the pressure and stresses of these competitions, which are real. And also, not just that, you also need to learn how to be able to sit at an exam for one hour, an hour and a half, two hours, two and a half hours, three hours, maybe four and a half hours, depending on the level. And actually use that time and that is perhaps that's also something that you can build up like I remember the time when I was preparing for my final IMO it I first started off with solving an exam that was IMO level it's two hours then I gave myself two and a half hours then three hours then three and a half four four and a half hours and I solved multiple exams in each of these time intervals and It was because I did it gradually, I gradually built up my concentration abilities that I was able to, at the IMO, try to solve a problem for four and a half hours. For four and a half hours, I was able to think about the problem and not just like go wander around or just be tired. So you need to build up that stamina and this is the fifth and final thing. So to recap, Number one, you need to know what these levels are in your country. In my, there are four levels, four or five. And after you've figured out what the levels are, at some point you will need to learn about proof writing. How do you write proofs? You need to learn about that. Then, thirdly, you need to solve problems. Solve problems from, your, from these different levels 
and solve problems from other countries of a similar difficulty. And don't be afraid to solve problems that are easier than the ones that come up on a particular level. Build up to the difficult problems. And then fourthly, you want to learn the theory. There might be some theory that you might need to solve some problems. Learn it, but learn it in the context of you trying to solve a problem, you being stuck for half an hour, an hour, an hour and a half, and then you go ahead and you read about the problem, you read the solution, and then you see, oh, it's using something I've never seen before. What are quadratic residues? What is this? How are they doing this? What is modular arithmetic? What are modular? Like, what are these things? And then when you get this question, what are these things? You go ahead and try to figure it out. Fermat's little theorem, what is that? Euler's tuition function, what is that? And after you've done those four things, the final part is maybe a month before the exam, a week before the exam, is figure out how are you going to take the test? How are you going to prepare yourself for test taking? How are you going to deal with the pressures that might come up, internal or external, when you're dealing with these exams, when you're before the exam and during the exam, and sometimes even after the exam, because there might be a week or two between levels and you need to get ready for the next one. And these are really the five steps that you need to take to be able to get from zero to the IMO. And as always, you know, this is a bunch of practice, like problem solving and learning. These things are not definite. They are not different deterministic. There are elements of luck involved. Sometimes you get problems that fit your personality or the things that you know about. Sometimes you get completely new problems that you just don't solve. Sometimes you have a great day. Sometimes you have a bad day. These things are normal. And there is luck involved, but the more you practice, the luckier you get. And as always, thanks for problem solving.